Okay, so last time um, in another tutorial I showed how to set up a reverse foot and get that working. Um, and now on this one I'm going to be talking about um, some issues that happen when you just have uh, a normal iframe. So to demonstrate that, if you grab the foot controller and you start moving it up, it, it's working how you would think it would work. The knee is bending, pretty happy with that. But as soon as you start getting a little higher, it does that. And that is bad. So, and that's because the IK handle doesn't know where to place the knee and where to point it at. And so it's, uh, it's annoying, it's dumb, it, it is not the natural reaction, um, and yeah, and it's just stupid. So hence the name of this video, The Stupid Flipping Knee. So we are going to be going over a couple ways to solve that. So I'll set the foot, get rid of that. Set the foot back to zero here. Um, and there's two ways that we can kind of solve this problem. So we can use a, a fairly standard way using a pull vector control. Uh, and that is a, a fairly straightforward and, and simple way of gaining control over what that knee is doing. So to get started with a pull vector control, you would need, of course, a control. So we're just going to make a NURB circle. And we'll name that the left knee PV for pull vector control. And then we're going to group that to itself by going control G. And we'll name that left knee pull vector control underscore GRP for group. Uh, and then we're going to go back and just select that control again. And we'll make it look just a little bit different. Uh, so we're going to go into the history under inputs, the make NURB circle. We're going to go down and we're going to change the degree from cubic to linear. And already that's going to make it an octagon. And we'll go to uh, six and make it a hexagon. So and then I'll go to F8 and select all those control points. And if I go to my tool settings under rotate, I'm going to do a step snap and turn that to absolute. And I'm just going to rotate this up and scale it down. So again, it's really nice to manipulate and move your controls around using these control points because it doesn't add any values into any of your attributes. So your translate, rotate, or scale. It's going to keep everything at zero, but we're moving it on the shape level and not on the transform level. So go back to F8 to get out of that. And we're going to go back to its parent group. So and we're going to snap that whole group to the knee. And then we're going to move that just straight forward. So one thing about IK handles and the joints that they're controlling with this leg setup is that the pull vector control really needs to be on the same plane that, this, that the joints are on. So these three joints would represent three points on a plane, and you want it to live on that plane. So as long as you set up your, your hip, knee, and ankle straight up and down, uh, it's really easy. You just snap it to your knee, and you move it forward on your z-axis, and that will give you that same plane. But if you ever have a model that comes out like this, and the knee is way over here, and it's kind of bent at this funky angle, that's going to create a different plane that it's on. And so you'll just have to be conscious of that uh, and making sure that it's staying in that same uh, position and space on that plane. So, but here we've made the joint chain straight up and down. It's really straightforward. So we take that and now that we've placed that control, we go in and we'll just select that control and we're going to shift select our ankle IK. And once we have that selected, then we're just going to create a pull vector constraint. So you can find that underneath the rigging tab. Um, or 
your animation tab and on your shelves. So it's this guy right here. Here's your pull vector constraint or under the rigging drop down menu uh, and menu set you can go to constrain down to pull vector and you can get to your option box here. Only option that you have is the weight is how much it is influencing that. So with those two selected we'll hit apply and that will create our pull vector constraint. So now we have control over that knee. And we can move that knee around and we can twist it um, all by having this. And then if we take that and we take our parent group, we can parent it, shift select the left foot control and hit P for parent. And that will parent it now under this. So now if we rotate our foot on Y, our knee is gonna rotate too. So let's get rid of that step snap. We don't need that anymore. So yeah, but as we rotate around, the knee rotates with it. That's a very natural way to for uh, a leg to work, right? We typically uh, rotate our knee with however we're rotating our ankle and our whole leg. They kind of work together. But there are instances where they will be separate. In that case, you can just counter animate the knee back to where you need it. You need it pointing at something. And then this will of course eliminate the biggest problem that we have with that stupid flipping that was happening. So see, ta-da! It doesn't flip anymore. It will point until it gets a little bit past. So obviously here it's going to snap there, but in that case, uh, the animator would just go in, grab that pull vector control, and just push it out. And that will keep it from moving around. So, yeah. So it does a really uh, pretty standard, pretty good job um, cor correcting that flipping problem that we were having. Um, and having it parented like that will give you some nice natural behavior. Um, you will get a little bit of kind of wonkiness when you rotate on the Z axis. Um, and even a little bit on your, well, not so much on your x-axis, but definitely on your z, you'll be seeing a lot on that. So um, that's a good setup. You could choose to go that way and, and be just fine. There's lots of rigs that use it, um, and it, and it's great. It's good. Uh, the one thing that I don't like about it is that it's a whole extra control that I have to animate and counter animate um, and keep track of when I'm moving a character around in a scene. And so I'm gonna show you another setup that you can use that eliminates the pull vector or the need for a pull vector control um, and allows you to control that knee twist just off of one extra attribute um, on the foot control. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just step back and undo everything until we've gotten rid of that control. So now we're back to square one. So, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating um, an attribute on our left foot control that is going to control the twist and we're going to lock down that rotation so that it's not going to flip around and go all crazy on us because that is, like I said, stupid. So, yeah. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we need to add two attributes onto our left foot control. So with our left foot control added, we're going to go to edit in our channel box and go down to add attribute. We're going to add two float attributes. The first one is just going to be called knee. And there's no minimum or maximum. And again, it's a float. Um, and we're just going to click add. And that second attribute is called knee offset. And we'll add that. So uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we need to lock down those values. So if you click on your control handle or your IK handle, um, you can look and you'll notice that you have these pull vector X, Y, and Z um, attributes here. So we are going to kind of lock that down and it's going to break and look terrible at first and then we're going to make it better. So we're first going to go to the pull vector X and we're going to enter in a value of 0 0.1. And then we're going to go to our Y and Z values and set those to zero. 
So you'll notice automatically right away it's broken our leg. It has twisted it over 90 degrees. We don't want that. So we're going to use our attributes to do that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding our knee and our knee offset. And those added values is what's going to be controlling this twist attribute on our IK handle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to set our knee offset to a value of 90, just like that. And now to connect it all up, we're going to go into our node editor. So the node editor can be found just under the Windows uh, menu under node editor. And it will pop up like this. So, and we've already got our foot control, the shape of the foot control, and our left IK ankle in here. If you open this up and it's not in there, uh, no worries. It shows up like this. All you have to do is select your IK handle, shift select your left foot control, and click this little button here to add those on. So it comes in. Don't worry about the shape node. We need just this and this, our transform node for our left foot control and our left IK um, for our ankle that controls our knee. So we're going to be using a utility node that was originally created for shader networks in Maya, but they come in really, really handy for a lot of rigging stuff. So we're going to go into... Um, the utility node. So if you click this button, it's going to toggle on or off um, this menu here. So, and this gives you all the stuff that you would find in your hypershade. Okay, we are specifically looking for a utility node called the plus minus average node. So we go down, and there it is right here. So if you click on it, it's going to plop in and add that there. There's our plus minus average node. So the other thing that you can do in the node editor, which is really super handy, is if you're in here and you press tab, uh, it will allow you to enter in uh, text in the text field um, the node that you're looking for. So if you start typing in plus, it shows up plus minus average. You can click on that and just hit enter on your keyboard and not your number pad. So, and that will do the same thing. So, but if you don't know the name, of the utility node or you can't remember it, uh, just go in and, and toggle that menu on and you can scroll through and you can find it. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to add those two together. So on the plus minus average node, if you go to your attribute editor, you'll find uh, a lot more options with that. So automatically the plus minus average node is set to an operation of sum. But you can also set it to no operation, subtract, or average. Um, we just need it for some right now, so we're going to leave it as is. So we're going to expand open by clicking that button right there in our node editor on the left foot control. And we're going to go down and we're going to find that knee control. And we're going to click and drag that up. And go to input 1D0, that's the first option and then we're going to open that up a little bit too so then we'll notice that as we open this up we also have another option for an input 1d1 which would be the second number that would be added together and we want that to be our knee offset so we'll click and drag on that knee offset and drag that up to the input 1d1 and now these are going to add together um, that's what this node does is it's going to add them together and then we're going to take the output of that. So we'll take our output 1D and click on that. And we'll come over to the left IK ankle. And we're going to connect it to that twist attribute. So there it is. Yay! It has popped it back to normal. We're actually all done with our node editor. So we don't need this anymore. It has made all of the connections that we need to have. So. We go back and we select that foot control, um, that 90 degree offset. That's what's popping it back into the normal position. And then what we want to do is we don't actually need that attribute anymore. So we're going to select it in our channel box. 
we're going to right click and go down to lock and hide selected. That value will always be there, but we don't need anyone messing with that. Um, the, the animators don't need to animate it. Um, it's usually set at you know, 90 degrees, um, which is not a zero value. And we like to keep everything at zero values. So it's easier to get stuff back to default if it's just at zero. So, but with that knee attribute, come to the knee here, and we can twist it. So you can see that we're twisting our knee, and then at the same time, we still get that same functionality where the knee is going to twist with the foot. I will replace it, and even better, it eliminates that flip. So no matter where I put that foot, it eliminates that flipping. It's going to act just the way that we would want it to, and we expect it to. So uh, it's a really great solution because you don't have any controls, extra controls that you have to counter animate. You have one extra attribute that you can sync it to um, to get your knee to twist. And then obviously, we twist our foot. We don't get huge deformations like we were getting before on, on just a pull vector. String. So, yeah, there you have it. So, really straightforward, you know, uh, either of those options work well. You can actually even use a pull vector constraint on top of this no flip uh, knee setup. Um, either one is fine. So, yeah, I hope that helps and I hope, uh, yeah, you can use it and, and even build on top of it. So, good luck. And yeah, have fun.